In this video, I'm going to demonstrate application of NMES, or neuromuscular electrical stimulation, using an MP continuum unit. First, I just want to show you the unit and how some of the settings are done. First thing I'm going to do here is turn it on. There you go. Now you'll see this is still set up with some other settings from whoever used it last. So I'm gonna go home, push the home button. And it's gonna ask, well, what do you wanna do? And I want to do NMES, so I'm gonna pick that. All right, and it's say, are you gonna do a large muscle or a small muscle? Well, I'm gonna do a small muscle in the forearm, so I'm gonna pick that. And then it has pre-programmed regimens for atrophy, spasm, in point. Uh, I don't want to use any of the pre-programmed regimens. I want to do my own settings, so I'm going to push custom. Generally, if you're going to use any pre-programmed regimens, you really should be looking at the manual so that you know exactly what those do and make sure they do what you want. Um, I tend to just use the custom settings so I can set my own parameters. Okay, so here we have time. It's set for 27 minutes. That means the machine would just turn off after 27 minutes. It's plenty of time for us. And then over here, you'll see you can use these two buttons to kind of go through the menu. So the first one was time. Next one is pulse rate. It's currently set at 35 hertz, and that's pretty good for uh, NMES. Um, and then it says, well, what waveform do you want? Do you want an asymmetrical waveform? or do you want a symmetrical waveform? If you use a symmetrical waveform, both electrodes will be equally active, or they will both spend an equal amount of time being the primary cathode and the primary anode. If you use, and in that case, with a symmetrical waveform, the colors won't matter at all. If you use an asymmetrical waveform, oops, there we go, asymmetrical waveform, then you do have a primary cathode and a primary anode, and the colors do matter, and in that case, the black will be your primary cathode, the one that is more active than the red one. So, continue going through the settings here. Uh, lag has to do with if you're using two um, sets of electrodes. I'm not, so that setting doesn't really matter. Um, Ramp plus means ramp up. How long is it going to take to ramp up? Right now it's set for two seconds. I'm going to take that down to one second uh, just so we can see things faster in the video. And then how long on time for channel one here? How long do I want it on? I have it for 12 seconds. That sounds fine. Uh, and then how long do I want channel one to ramp down? Again, I have it set at two seconds here. I'm gonna change that to one, again, just so we can see things a little quicker. Um, channel two I'm not using, so I don't really care what those are set for. And there we go. So once I've gone through all of that, I just push okay. All right. And it says channel one's ready to go here. It doesn't show channel two because there's nothing plugged in. And has the time set at 27 minutes. When I start using this button here to increase my intensity, the timer will start. To decrease the intensity, I'd push the bottom button. All right, so we have to get some electrodes going here. So I'm gonna just take my uh, alcohol wipe and clean the area where I wanna put my electrodes. Put one there, and then I'm going to put one a little more distal. Okay. Now, you'll remember I did choose an asymmetrical waveform, so the color of these electrodes will matter. I'm going to shoot for extensor carpi radialis brevis and maybe longus, and so I'm going to Put that right there about where I think that's going to be. If you don't remember your anatomy so well, you can uh, go ahead and pull out your favorite anatomy book and find those um, location of those muscles. Basically, you want it over the center of the muscle. Um, there's also motor point charts that you can use to try to um, determine where to put the electrodes as well. 
Okay, so there we go, we're set with that. And I'm going to then start to increase the intensity here. You'll see the intensity is displayed right here. This little dot next to channel one means the um, current is on. You'll see that dot go away when it's doing its off time. Do you feel anything yet? No. Okay, so nothing yet. Okay, so she felt something at the 4.0 intensity, and that's generally where people start to cross that uh, strength duration curve for sensory, somewhere around four or five. Now you see the dot just went away. That means it's doing its off time right now. We wanna to get to a motor response though, so I'm gonna to continue to increase the intensity. The other thing you'll see here is that we just got a padlock in the middle. That means that the intensity is locked just turn back on again, means the intensity is locked um, and I can't turn it up anymore. No matter how much I push this, I can't turn it up anymore. That's a safety feature so that if somebody has this on, um, they won't inadvertently increase the intensity. To unlock it, all you do is decrease the intensity and then you can go ahead and increase some more. While you're adjusting it, you'll see that dot stays there and that um, is just so as you're adjusting it, you can see what's actually happening. You, you, it basically deactivates the off time. All right, so how is that feeling? Like pins and needles. Okay, so like pins and needles, sensation, but we don't have any um, actual motor response yet. We'll see when we get one. Generally, somewhere in the mid-teens is where we're gonna get a motor response. So is that us? All right. So actually what we got here is a pretty good response for um, extensor digitorum. All right. And you'll see it just ramped down and turned off. So we got a nice extensor digitorum there um, from our uh, stimulation where it is right now. It'll turn off for a few seconds and then come back on. And there we have nice extensor digitorum. And you see we also have some extensor carpi ulnaris. So I'm probably more lateral with my active electrode than I wanted to be. One of the uh, difficulties in the forearm is that the muscles are very small. And so if you're using a two by two electrode like this, it's hard to hit just one thing. I'm gonna turn down the intensity here so that I can reposition my electrode. And we're just gonna take this and I'm gonna go a little bit more medial and see if we can't get a wrist extensor going here. And so same thing, I'm gonna slowly increase my um, intensity. Feel anything? Okay, so she's got the sensory going. And again, we'll have to go up probably to the mid-teens or so to get a motor response. Okay, looks like we have um, extensor indices and still getting extensor digitorum, and now we're getting more of my radial wrist extensors, which is what I wanted. But again, we have extensor indices, ED, looks like we have uh, extensor digitorum minimi as well, and that's just the problem when you're using such a large electrode on the forearm. Uh, if you're stimulating you know, the shoulder or the back or a leg, maybe even the upper arm, you could probably get away with that, but it's a little hard in the uh, forearm to hit just what you want with such a large electrode. So I'm gonna turn this down again, and we'll demonstrate this with a smaller electrode. So I'm gonna take this one off, and now I'm gonna put a one inch electrode right about where I think I need it. Okay, I'm gonna go right about there. And I'm gonna plug in my black lead wire, which is the primary cathode, since I'm using an asymmetrical waveform into that. And we'll see how that works. So this is gonna 
make it able possible for me to hit a smaller group of muscles um, or maybe just one muscle the difference is the stimulation is going to feel more intense since it's all going through a smaller space we'll see how that goes so tell me when you feel something I feel it. okay so this time my client felt it at 3.5 and we're going to keep going up until we um, get some motor response here and probably mid-teens. May have to go a little higher with that smaller electrode. Okay, we got extensor indices. And there we got a really nice radial wrist extensor, um, but also still getting um, some of the uh, um, extensor digitorum. Now here I wanna show you one other thing. Now that we've found our radial wrist extensors. So let's pretend that my client um, had a radial nerve palsy and I wanted to selectively stimulate that radial nerve during functional activities. Here I have a switch. Uh, it's just an on off switch. And uh, this unit has a little port in the side where I can put that switch in. Once I put that switch in, There we go. And I'm going to wait for this to turn off a minute. There we go. So now that I have that switch in, um, my on off time uh, has been deactivated that I've set in the machine and the switch controls the on and the off. The ramp up and ramp down still work, but the switch will control the on and the off. So if my patient had, say, a radial um, nerve palsy so that she wasn't able to extend her wrist, so you can just kind of lift your arm up here and just let your wrist flop, all right? With your wrist flopped like that, it's not very functional. But let's say I have a bottle here and I want her to grab the bottle, but she can't extend her wrist. She'll just kind of, you know, run into it and not be able to get it because she can't extend her wrist. With the use of a switch, I can say, okay, I want you to grab the bottle. And then with the switch, I can extend the wrist and then she can reach and grab the bottle and then I can release the wrist extensors uh, when we're done with the activity. So using a switch like this in conjunction with NMES is called FES or functional electrical nerve stimulation and this is a situation where you might do it in the arm. Uh, in the leg it's typically done with a uh, toe drop and uh, if somebody can't uh, dorsiflex their foot very well, uh, they may have a heel switch actually in their shoe. So when they heel strike, it stimulates them to dorsiflex so they don't catch their toe. If you're having difficulty finding a good place for your active electrode or primary cathode, one thing that you can do is to use a movable electrode and you can make one of these just yourself. This is just a two liter bottle cap. Inside I have uh, a piece of just a regular kitchen sponge, new one. I've punched a hole in the side of the bottle cap so I can insert my lead wire uh, in through the side into the sponge. And then I've just wet my sponge with um, saline solution. Uh, you can also use tap water. Uh, tap water has enough contaminants in it that you will uh, easily be able to um, get electrical current through that as well. All right, so here um, I'm just going to apply this to my client. I'm also using my switch to turn the current on and off so that I can easily control it. And so here I can just hit my switch. So there we have actually a fairly nice wrist extension. Uh, if I go this way, I'm going to get a little something else. If I go, I got a little supination there. Now I'm getting more finger extension. All right, if I go way back here, I get uh, wrist ulnar deviation and extension. And so you can use this to just kind of find where that perfect spot is to put your electrode to get the response that you want.